Hi, hello, good morning everyone. This is Dr. Kasikari Prasad, Associate Professor, Graphologist, Writer and Motivational Speaker. Today, in this class, we would like to discuss on energy density in electrostatic fields. In our previous topics, we have discussed many things about electric potential, electric dipole and all those things we have discussed in our previous topics. Now, in this topic, we will discuss on energy density in electrostatic fields. For such engineering classes on electromagnetic waves and transmission lines, antennas, cellular mobile communications, satellite communications and all communication engineering subjects. And for personality development, inspiring talks, motivational talks and for good handwriting skills, kindly subscribe our channel Kasigari Prasad. So here the main objective in this topic is to bring different point charges from infinite distance to a particular area. Let us say as shown in the figure we are supposed to bring charge Q1, Q2, Q3 from infinity distance to from infinity distance to a particular area as shown in the figure to point P1, P2 and P3. So here in order to determine the energy present in an assembly of charges we must first determine the amount of work necessary to assemble them. So how much amount of work is necessary in order to assemble or collect and place all these charges in that uh, area. That is, that is first we have to determine. In doing so, suppose we wish to position three points, point charge 1, point charge Q2, point charge Q3 from infinity to an empty space as shown in the figure. Now let us see. Ante M le dandi. Infinity distance ninchi charge Q1, Q2, Q3 ni manu ok empty space lo ki thies ko rawata ni ki yanth amount of work karcha uthundi yanth amount of work manu ko kaa wali anedha determine chaya ali. So initial ka first charge ni manu move chese ta pudu. Initially when moving first charge no work is required to transfer charge Q1 from infinity to P1. Because the space is initially charge free, charge free and there is no electric field. And the empty space low initial ga 20 charge lay the kabati, akadiki manamu waka charge q1 ni distribute chaitanikante tiskaravataniki, no work is supposed to be required. So from that w is equal to minus q integral from point A to point B E dot DL. This is the work done equation we already calculated. So from this, since in moving this charge from that point to this point, no work is done, we can estimate W is equal to 0. So the work done in transferring Q2 from infinity to point 2. Now we are going to shift second charge from infinity distance to the empty space. Now it is not an empty space. Already charge Q1 is present there. So now the work done in transferring Q2 from infinity to P2 is equal to the product of Q2 and the potential between the first charge and the next coming charge that is potential between V21 at point P2 due to Q1. Similarly, the work done in positioning Q3 at P3 is equal to Q3 of V32 plus V31 where V32 and V31 are potentials at P3 due to Q2 and Q1 respectively. So the total amount of work done in positioning all these three charges is We is equal to W1 plus W2 plus W3. Initially the first, in moving first charge the amount of work done is equal to 0. So W1 is equal to 0. Therefore equation is We is equal to 0 plus Q2 V21 plus Q3 V31 plus V32. So this is our first equation. Now let us consider we are going to move the charges in reverse order. That means first we shift third charge Q3, next second charge Q2, then first charge Q1. At the time the total amount of work done in positioning all these three charges in reverse order We is equal to W3 plus W2 plus W1 that is equal to in initially moving third charge first time into an empty space 
no work is done therefore w3 is equal to 0 now when moving second charge w2 already third charge is present there so it is equal to the product of first that is that charge q2 and the potential between second charge and already existing third charge so v23 plus q1 into v12 plus v13 where v23 is the potential at p2 due to q3 v12 and v13 are respectively the potentials at p1 due to q2 and q3 now adding the first equation and the second equation we will be getting 2we is equal to q1 of v12 plus v13 plus q2 of v21 plus v23 plus q3 of v31 plus v32 therefore this equation can be summarized or expanded as q1 v1 plus q2 v2 plus q3 v3 that equation we can written as we is equal to 1 over 2 q1 v1 plus q2 v2 plus q3 v3 where v1 v2 and v3 are total potentials at point p1 p2 and p3 respectively in general if there are n number of point charges we have calculated for first charge second charge and third charge if there are n number of point charges then what to do we is equal to 1 over 2 q1 v1 plus q2 v2 plus q3 v3 therefore we can write we is equal to 1 over 2 summation k is equal to 1 to n qk vk in joules okay now let us consider instead of point charges there were having charge distribution or continuous charge distribution to say then our same concept with the help of work equation we is equal to 1 over 2 summation k is equal to 1 to n qk vk in joules can be rewritten as we is equal to 1 by 2 integral now the charge distribution rho l into v potential v dl for a line charge and for a surface charge we is equal to 1 by 2 integral surface charge distribution rho s into potential v and for a surface charge distribution of ds similarly for a volume charge we can write we is equal to 1 by 2 integral rho v v into dv for volume charge now we also know that what is the charge distribution rho v is equal to del dot d so the above equation now can be rewritten as we is equal to 1 by 2 integral v del dot d into v dv but for any vector a and scalar v we know some vector identities which we have studied already so from those vector identities we have chosen two the first one is del dot v a is equal to a dot del v plus v of del dot a another vector identity is del dot a of v is equal to del dot v a minus a dot del v now with reference to these two vector identities we will apply any one of it so applying the identity in the above equation w e we will get w e is equal to 1 by 2 integral v del dot d into v means we are using here uh, the second identity del dot a of v is equal to del dot v a minus a dot del v the second identity given here is applicable here therefore w e is equal to 1 by 2 integral v del dot a means v d into d v minus 1 by 2 integral v uh, this one a dot del v means a means d here d dot del v into d v this is our equation now with reference to this equation we apply divergence theorem to this equation on the right hand side to the first term of the right hand side that means to this equation the last bottom equation w e is equal to 1 by 2 integral v del dot v d dv up to here we apply divergence theorem minus 1 over 2 integral v d dot del v dv is our known equation now with reference to this w e is equal to 1 by 2 integral closed integral s 
vd dot ds minus 1 by 2 integral v d dot del v dv. Divergence theorem gives relation from volume integral to surface integral. So we have written the things in surface integral. We already discussed that v varies as 1 over r as d varies as 1 by r square as 1 by r square for point charges. V varies as 1 by r square and d as 1 by r cube for dipoles. Hence Vd in the first term on the right hand side of the above equation we can say that it must at least vary by 1 over r cube while ds varies as r square. Now with reference to these we can finally conclude that the first integral in equation we must tend to 0 as the surface s becomes large. So the first term here tends to become 0. Therefore our equation now reduces to we is equal to minus 1 by 2 integral v integral v d dot del v dv is equal to 1 by 2 integral v d dot e dv. Since e is equal to minus del v and d is equal to epsilon e. We apply those two here. We is equal to 1 by 2 integral d dot e dv that is equal to 1 by 2 integral epsilon naught e square dv. e square dv. We know these two relations and we apply it here. So from this we can define electrostatic energy density we in joules per meter as we is equal to differential d of we divided by dv that is equal to 1 by 2 d dot e is equal to 1 by 2 epsilon e square that is equal to d square by 2 epsilon naught. So finally the total work done we can be rewritten as we is equal to integral of small we into dv. Small we means the above equation. Okay, this is the total amount of work done uh, that is required in electrostatic fields. Thank you. All the very best for such engineering classes on electromagnetic waves and transmission lines, antennas, cellular mobile communications, satellite communications and all communication engineering subjects and for personality development, inspiring talks, motivational talks uh, and for good handwriting skills, uh, kindly subscribe our channel Kasigari Prasad. Thank you. Jai Hind. Jai Bharat.